Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, an angel is under attack. An angel named Ben Armstrong. An angel. A man who has done no wrong is under attack by an evil organization bent on his destruction. It's almost like he's John Wick and he's going after the high table. And they've taken everything, including a finger. Uh, I don't know which finger. I wasn't paying attention to the finger, but it was a finger. They took a finger. Or maybe that's not it. Maybe, maybe he's Luke Skywalker and he's fighting against an evil empire. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's this crazy narrative out there. Maybe, maybe he's just an innocent man caught up in a violent and sadistic game. Maybe. Or it's just a bunch of crybabies crying over a business. This is not financial advice, but I'm always right. It's your boy, Blake. Pocket, that crypto wallet, that bing bada bing ching ching big profit. Even when the market sideways, I'm looking for ways to get paid. I'm checking my coins around breakfast, then again around bedtime. Bet this, it's not financial advice, <laughs> but I'm always right. 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 I'm always right, I'm always right, I'm always right. <laughs> Guys, it's a sad day. It's a sad, sad day. They took his Lambo. Are they going to take his dog next? Is he going to have to go John Wick on you in order to fix all of this? Now, you guys saw what was going on. You saw me uh, give you just, look, there's no innocent parties in this. Uh, and I want to close something out because uh, there was an update. And I want to, guys, guys, here, here's the thing. Uh, I did see a video that came out yesterday uh, from Rodney. And I just got off the phone with Rodney. He's on his way to the, uh, I think he's on his way uh, to the airport because he's getting ready to leave. And, you know, he went in there and he said that, you know, nobody, uh, nobody in there is acting like they're being held hostage. And for those of you that don't know, let me show you. Uh, Rodney was the co-host of, um, uh, I don't even know what the goddamn show is called anymore, but he was the host of it. Um, the, the show with no name or what, whatever you call it, right? But let me, let me give you an example here, right? Let me give you an example here. Um, this is the previous show. And you'll notice uh, by the, the fact that everything is readable on the screen. And then you see over here, everything is a red blur. I don't know why somebody changed that. But uh, here's the thing. Uh, one of the things that people said about uh, Ben Armstrong was they didn't like working for him because he mean. He does mean that He says mean stuff, right? Like, he he's like... You're not the boss of me, but like, why are you bossing me around? Why are you telling me like say and do and like, you know, I'm trying to like chill and you're like getting in my space. Like it's negativity and like, I'm not trying to deal with that. Like this is no work Monday. <laughs> oh my God, we're getting to do nothing Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like you're just, you're just, you're harshing my mellow man. Like, could you like back off a pace? And look, there's a few things that I want to say here. Uh, first, um, if you don't like your boss, you can quit. If you don't like your boss and you are a 33% minority holder in a company, you can try to do what you're trying to do right now. But here's the thing, just because you're a nice guy and 
you know, you, you can't stand up because, you know, even if you stand up, you still kind of short. Uh, it doesn't matter. Here's what matters. At the end of the day, the majority holder of a company is entitled to the majority of the company. Now, we can rest assured that the amount of money that is owed uh, to Ben Armstrong is significant if he were to choose to take a buyout of the company. And I believe that TJ even said in a video that he would do it over five years. He'd be willing to do it over five years. But uh, we have to assume also that because they let him go during the stake deal, that he would be uh, awarded for whatever the value of the company was at that point. Plus, there would have to be an independent auditor not a hit network, discover crypto, whatever you call it, hired auditor. And we have clarification and verification that according to TJ telling Austin Arnold from uh, Altcoin Daily, all the taxes are paid. So if all the taxes are paid, then there's no liability. And if there's no liability, then everything is profit. And if everything is profit, uh, so far today, as of now, and you know, we do have to go back a ways. And, and in fact, since we had it pulled up here, uh, we're going to go back and look real quick uh, because it's absolutely crazy. Uh, to this point, to this point, um, I, I, and generally speaking, if you are um, uh, buying a company or doing something along those lines, generally speaking, you have 90 days from the date of sale in order to uh, pay the majority holder if you are. Uh, doing that. And it's been a month so far. So uh, they're running out of time to uh, make a deal. Typically speaking, and, and legally speaking, you're supposed to have this resolved within 90 days. And typically, uh, that decision is supposed to be made on how the shares are distributed within that 90 day period. So uh, we are getting to the end of the road. Now, by the way, I do want to add, uh, you see here 11,000 views, 10,000 views, 13,000 views, uh, 18,000 views, um, and then, you know, it's just kind of going down, 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 down. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, it is going up, up, up and away over at the new Ben Armstrong crypto. So is it, is it okay, uh, for the boss to be mean is, I mean, what do you guys think in the comment section? You let me know, uh, is it okay for your boss to be an old meanie head? Uh, does he have to be like super nice and like, does he have to like be super, super awesome? Does he have to like make me feel really good? Uh, because like, it's really ridiculous. My high score, by the way, is 312. If you haven't scored better than 312, then that is on you, baby. Uh, and if you haven't already, Elon Muskrat game is out and playable right now. We're going to reward the top, uh, we're going we're gonna to reward the top score with some tokens for Elon Muskrat, okay? So uh, let, let's not forget that. So if you guys want to go and you want to check it out, um, there there is a link. I, the links are everywhere to go check it out. It's in Spatial, uh, and Spatial has been gracious enough to, to sponsor and do all of this and help us out. So uh, really, really cool stuff going on over there. So check it out, if you will. Uh, but uh, so, you know, here's what, um, here's what, um, here's, here's what it really comes down to. Um, you don't have to like your boss, but it doesn't mean you can take over his company. You don't need to like your boss's methods. That doesn't mean that you can take over his company. Now, if you're a majority shareholder, then you can attempt to do that. And what they did was they locked him out and then got a restraining order to prevent him from coming in while they did whatever they might do with the records. Now, if they're nice people, what would they do with the records? Well, um, I don't know, but um, uh, they were subpoenaed to preserve them all. So I would assume that they wouldn't do anything and they would make sure that all records are preserved, right? Um, I would presume that all records of any problems were documented. And if you tell me that, well, you know, uh, you know, some of these problems were not documented, then I would say this because one of the allegations that was going around, one of their, uh, one of their, I'm going to be able to dunk because of this reasons that they gave was because, um, uh, that because uh, he would, and by this I mean Ben, he would walk by 
uh, guys and smack their asses or flick them on the, um, you know, uh, as he was walking by sometimes. And now here's the thing. If you tell me, if you tell me that nobody else in that organization anywhere did anything like that, okay. But if anybody else in there uh, was doing any of the same stuff and it was being allowed in there, then it's very simple here. You don't have a case. If you are um, insinuating that there was violence. And, and by the way, uh, Miles Maddox is pointing out inappropriate. It is inappropriate. It, it's not appropriate at all in, in a business environment. However, that is applied equally to everybody. And if they were all conducting inappropriate work behavior, then it was a culture of inappropriate work behavior. And that is the fault of the CEO and manager there, which is, in this instance, TJ Shedd. So um, if we are to believe that, um, if we are to believe that Ben Armstrong was merely the talent there, despite being the majority holder, and that TJ Shedd was the person in charge, then he was responsible for the behavior of all employees within there and handling the inappropriate behavior. But for some reason, it was not handled, nor was it handled uh, with all of the people. So, you know, you can say what you want about it. Uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to point this out and I wanted to show you guys uh, and I did show, well, I guess I did show you, uh, but Rodney was on there yesterday and then he did a live stream afterwards and he basically talked about what was going on there and that everybody was happy. And of course they were. Um, everybody was working and of course they were. Uh, everybody was doing whatever and they, and they were enjoying their work. And of course they were because, um, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but people in North Korea, Korea, a lot of them are happy because they don't know, uh, they don't know they're in this horrible situation. They think everybody's in the same situation, so they find happiness. People in China, same thing. They find happiness. People in Russia, they find happiness. Uh, people in extreme situations uh, find happiness where they can obtain happiness. And it doesn't mean that uh, it, it doesn't mean that um, that in in some instances they're doing it because you have to find it because you just you just have to find happiness, right? Uh, it doesn't mean you love your situation. It doesn't mean that you love it. However, here's the thing. I'm not condoning any inappropriate behavior. I'm not condoning any inappropriate behavior. However, however, the question is, were the rules laid down and agreed to applied by the CEO to any and everyone in the same fashion and in the same way? Because it is, if you guys listen to the tapes and you guys listened to all of the reasons, and I mean the reasons from, and by the way, I think it is my opinion uh, because uh, Rodney's opinion is that I'm biased because uh, I'm friends with Ben and that clouds my judgment. And that would be fair enough that, that because I, you know, Look, at some point, people are going to come after Rodney, and I'm going to stand by Rodney, too. And um, I'm going to look like an asshole because Rodney looks like an asshole to most people most of the time. And that's going to be okay with me because it's more important to me to stand by uh, my friend than it is to um, make sure that I save face or gain clout, yo. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna take a bullet with my friend because that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's just the way... That's just the way that I think things should be. And if you disagree, that's okay. You can, you can disagree with me and you can not like that. And you can think that, well, just because he's your friend uh, or because you want something out of him, uh, that one I heard too, and that, um, that I'm overlooking any of the bad. But here's the thing. There are bad and it's not my job to find the bad. My job is to have the, 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 the back of my friend 
And yeah, and Troy, can you believe the nerve of this guy buying the same microphone that, that I buy just so he can match me? What is going on with that? Like, why would he do something like that? Why would he buy the same microphone? It's almost like I put him over to a vendor and had him buy so that I could get a commission off of it. It's almost like that, right? I didn't, but it would be funny. Uh, by the way, I found it absolutely hilarious that he had it. Matter of fact, he doesn't like it. So what he does is he puts it down here so that it's out of the way so that nobody can see it. Um, I turn mine uh, because I'm not, I'm a nerd. So I turn mine red and so that it just glows red instead of uh, all the different colors. Um, but the, the thing is, um, do I, um, do I want something at the end? And the answer would be, yeah. I mean, I would like to be on his show. I would like to gain more exposure because more exposure would help me tremendously. And, you know, if you're going to argue that with me and you're going to say, yeah, but you're just trying to get something out of it. Uh, Rodney talked shit about him and got on discover crypto. I mean, we're all in the game of influence and influence peddling. So there are going to be times when, you know, we're, we're, we're not always going to see eye to eye. And, and I should point out, like, I, like I text Rodney all day, you know, like we've been friends for a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so, so, uh, when he came, he came to me and he started talking about, to me about inside details in there. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I could, I, I kind of thought everything that he was saying, by the way, that, that he was telling me, like, I basically already knew that because look, I've been in management for a long time. I've been running businesses for a long time. Like I know, I, I'm not going to say that I'm the best judge of people because people do surprise you sometimes, but here's the thing. I mean, at the end, um, uh, people are people and some are good, some are bad, some are indifferent. Some of the bad people are still just good people that are having a bad day or that are taking advantage of a system. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means that they're opportunistic. You know, I, like I don't I don't think people at their root are bad. So I don't think that that is that place is populated by evil people, despite the thumbnail. I don't think that even TJ is a bad person, per se. Uh, I think that this uh, attempting to steal a company is a bad thing. I think that that is 100 percent a bad thing. Um, and I think that when you tried to get Ben to give up the company and just allow you to quietly buy him out, if, if when you were trying to do that, you were using your mentor. You were actually like you were ganging up on him two to one. Plus you had um, you had Larry, the disabled guy coming in and he was also in there going, you know, Ben, you know, you go, you don't have to do that. You gonna have to bed. Why you do that, man? Why you? Why you don't do? Why don't you? Why don't you give me a give me a goddamn Lambo? Give me the Lambo. You know what I mean? Give me the, give me the Lambo, or whatever the fuck he said. Like I don't know. Uh, most of it I could understand. Matter of fact, uh, you guys only heard one conversation, but uh, you can understand him for the most part, right? So, um, <laughs> so you, you know, you you get it, like. Um, he was kind of, uh, he's a fast talker guy. He, he's a fast talker guy and he tried to fast talk and, uh, look, there's, there's a lot going on underneath. And I will say that I think it is my opinion that he was not being advised to the best of an attorney's ability. And by that, I mean, Ben, when this first happened and he had somebody who was willing to make concessions and try to make a deal and try to negotiate a deal wasn't willing to play hardball. Well, he, he, that's not the case anymore. Um, I, I do think that his current attorney is a little bit better. Uh, so I, I would feel like whatever he is um, entitled to, he will end up getting. And if he, as the 67% majority holder, is entitled to certain things, then he will get them because, you know, at the end of the day, what some of you guys may not realize is that uh, they own that building outright that uh, what Rodney called like a bunker, like a fortress. Uh, they own that outright, which means that it is an asset that he is entitled to 67 percent of the value of. Uh, there is some property that um, that that the, the company owns that it 
I don't know if it leases or if it just donates or gives to people uh, who are affiliated with them, but those properties are worth millions of dollars. He is entitled to that as well. Um, and he is entitled to 67% of the profits after the EBITDA um, for, for all of this stuff. So if he is going away, he's going away uh, a rich man all over again. And here's the thing. Uh, I think if it were me, I would say no. I mean, judge is going to have to decide ultimately, but I think you fight every step of the way because at the end, what's more valuable to you in the bull run? Um, having the Ben Armstrong Crypto Show channel uh, with 50, or almost 60,000 subscribers now or Discover Crypto or both of them because you've done both of them. And then uh, turning the blee, the, the, the blee, God damn it, the Ben Armstrong Crypto Show into uh, Crypto Crossfire channel and, uh, you know, building out from there and then, uh, you know, integrating Bencoin in some way. You know, all of those things uh, probably are easier for him to do and just clear everybody out that's working there. And here's the thing. If you like everybody who's working there, that's okay. They'll find other jobs. If they're capable and qualified, then they're going to find jobs wherever jobs are available. They're not entitled to work there. They're not entitled to work uh, at Hit Network. They're not entitled to work in, you know, you, you it's it, it doesn't work that way. So, you know, we're getting down and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. And um, Web3Me says Ben's a mess and they wanted him out. So what? That doesn't matter. Um, nobody cares because he's still the majority owner of the company. And as a minority stakeholder, uh, I would say that TJ has rights, but he has a limited set of rights. Uh, and what he did was he went back after the fact, and this will be proven, by the way. Uh, it, he went back after the fact to try to make up and, and come up with reasons. Um, by the way, uh, when you see the uh, uh, w when you see any filings against Ben Armstrong, uh, you will see that they took place. All of it took place after he was fired, long time after he was fired. And here's the best part. The, 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 the best part, too, that is um, that is evidence that they were trying, and along with all of the recordings is evidence of the coercion that they were trying to use against him. And um, for example, uh, Vumio. Vumio is owned by Justin Williams, I want to say. Um, if, you, if you ever see that Vumio thing, it's like Justin something or something, you know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's owned by Justin. Uh, ben holds the, he's not a 67% holder. Uh, he is a majority holder. Uh, stockholder or a shareholder in the company, but he doesn't have a big majority. Uh, he's not a majority. He's not the majority owner of anything. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, Musk is already on Volta Change. It is on Volta Change. If you want to go to the website, elonmusktoken.com and uh, burn some tokens, you can do that through there. Um, but, um, and Troy brings up another point here. Uh, so you know, TJ waits till the day he is fired. Sounds legit. Plus, I tend to believe someone when they say open the books, bad folks want books burned, not open. And, and that's it, right? Open the books. If there's a, um, if, if there's, I mean, that's the fairest way to settle it, TJ. Right? Nick? Tricky, Nicky. That's the, that's the easiest way to settle everything, right? Um, I don't, I don't like him is not a reason for him not to own the company. Open the books up. Let everybody see what it is. Let's have a forensic audit. Let's have an audit of the uh, of the books. And let's figure out the value of the company at the time that you terminated your agreement with the talent. And as the majority shareholder, you will have to pay him an amount commensurate with that. And if you cannot afford, then get out. Because you don't have the means and the wherewithal to handle the business in, in the first place. So, eh, I want to say. So, that's just a little update to give you guys an idea of, you know, um, I know that there's stuff. And, and by the way, when I when I say that, when I say that I just got off the phone with Rodney, uh, I just got off the phone with Ben too. 
I, I, I talked to Ben this evening. I, I talked to Rodney this evening, you know, um, and I'm not in the middle, by the way. I'm not in the middle of anything. Um, Rodney is doing his influence thing, trying to get a, get his way, um, find his way in this crypto space. I'm doing the same thing. Ben's doing the same thing. Ben's just got a big head start on everybody. So uh, let's talk about some uh, crypto. Let's talk about a little bit, just a little bit about what's going on. Um, let's uh, pop in here with the first thing. Uh, 4.714, 10-year treasury is starting to come down. Uh, remember, guys, I went into a, I want, did I go into a short? Yeah, I'm in a short right now, and it spiked all the way up to 27,900. So pissed me off. Pissed me off. Just, just like, how dare you? Uh, 27, 8, 89, 90 is what it spiked up to. Now it's come back down. Uh, I don't think that it stays up here, by the way. I did enter a little bit up in this range right here. Uh, 27, 430 right here. Cause I was thinking that it would come back down one more time. And the reason for that was because the liquidity looked like it was going to, um, it, it looked like we were going to come into the liquidity pool and look what we did instead of, remember this morning, I told you guys, uh, I was saying that it was going up, right? Well, then I got into it and uh, Darren does things. I took profit, by the way, right after we got off of the live stream. Uh, but then Darren does things, got it in my head on uh, on Twitter that maybe it would go down to 26, which is in line with what I was thinking was going to happen. So I went ahead and said, you know what? I think I'm going to take the profit. I'm going to reverse this and I'm going to short it and see what happens because here we sit right here with this liquidity pool you know, we're going to probably come down into this range because it's right there. Like this is this is all right here for it. Right. And uh, son of a bitch, it reversed and it started going back up. And then when you come back here and look at it on the weekly basis, um, then you see the same thing. Like there's just so much liquidity in this range right now. Uh, it's going to come back down. It just didn't come back down at this point yet. So uh, and for those of you that are wondering, by the way, uh, this is uh, basically it's a heat map. And the heat variable here is purple is ice cold and all the way up to yellow is red hot. And you can see down here, there's some red hot areas and might be a little bit of a spike up here uh, to fill this little red area. But after that's done, it's either going to go up here to 28.6 or it's going to come down here. And the easiest place to make money is down here at the bottom. So I do think that we're still coming down into this 26.189 sort of range uh, down to 26.3. Like I think that it's inevitable that we're going to see uh, a big sell-off happening at some point very, very soon. So uh, I feel good about the position. Let me go show you uh, what it was that we were trading so that you guys can see um, see what is going on. And you can see I'm down on this one, by the way. Um, I'm down 200 and uh, I put 1227. And I'm down 252 right now. Uh, 28,686 is my liquidation point. So it's about $1,000 away. If I need to, I'll expand the position. Uh, I can pop in here and I can add some more. If I add another like 800 here, then I would add the uh, add the margin up here by about $1,000. So I can go back in and I can add some position to it and I'll be fine unless it spikes super fast. And if it does, it's going to have to go way up above where it was right now. So if I start, I, if I see it start to just go crazy and start wicking, then, you know, and, and maybe by the way, it just gets lost, but I, I didn't put a stop loss on it on this one uh, because I did think that was coming down. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, I think that now that the Asian markets and now that everybody's in here looking at this kind of run right here uh, and we see it, you know, like this is, we did the we did the move here, right? And what do we get? We got a liquidity sweep. Uh, if we stick to our guns, then that's what's going to happen, right? So now I got to move up here. That should mean liquidity sweep coming back down uh, to match up to this level. Now it's still bullish indicator, uh, still in a bullish pattern over here, but <clears throat> it would also make sense to see it come down into this range right here and come into that. Um, and come into that pattern, by the way. And if you go check out anybody else, they were telling you the same thing that I'm telling you right now is that, you know, we, we most likely we're going to have this sweep uh, come up into this range and then probably start to come down because we still have this. And this is almost looking like a heat seeker area, 26.5 right now. Um, so I, I do think that that's what's going to end up happening. Uh, so I'm just going to watch this play out for the next little while. Uh, I, I think I think it's going to start dropping pretty soon, but overall, not a bad day. Fear and greed index up to 45 until we get 
uh, until we start seeing the bond yields come down and until we start seeing the DXY uh, really start to come down. And, and by the way, from $1.07 to $1.06 is a come down. But we saw that before. We saw that before. And we've seen that multiple times so far in the last little while. So what we're going to really need to see is a full on capitulation and a move down uh, and start getting back into this 104, 103 range. If we see that, by the way, then Bitcoin could be off to the races, at least for a short period of recovery. But as long as the DXY is still running a little bit hot, then we're going to run a little bit hot. I did move DubX up here. Uh, we're going to put that up here a little bit more so we can cover uh, and be more in tune with that. Friday, I will be interviewing Ben. So if you have not already, um, I will be interviewing Ben Armstrong uh, for the Dubai X podcast. And I don't know if I'm going to have multiple appearances there or anything like that. You know, we still got, uh, I still got work to do with whatever I'm doing with Dubai X. I am a holder. Uh, I am an investor. Uh, they do have that IPO decentralization IPO that they're working on right now. Um, and I, I am in that private chat, by the way. So, you know, there's plenty of, uh, excuse me. I want to say opportunity. Uh, right there. So uh, we'll see, you know, if it if it turns into something, if uh, and, and by the way, just so you guys know, um, I am looking for any kind of sponsorships, videos, anything right now, because uh, I have Gate.io, uh, which I didn't get two signups yesterday, uh, MEXC Global, which has been tremendous in helping me uh, for the, the last bunch of months. Uh, Nord VPN, these guys over here, I need 21. And by the way, uh, if you see anybody else uh, saying that they've got NordVPN, oh, God, um, I need more signups than they do. And Ruby Dex over here uh, for decentralized exchange. Um, so th anything that you can do right there would certainly help me out. And if you are interested, then you can become a member of the channel. Currently 45 members to the channel. Used to be, by the way, 160, um, down to 43 right now. So um, love, please, but... Everybody doesn't love Bleeze as much anymore. It's getting real nasty out here. Uh, and by the way, I think that that should be a testament. And, and you know, maybe, maybe it's the fact that you guys just don't love me uh, the way that I want to be loved. <laughs> maybe that's the case because I don't have uh, as many members, right? Um, and the membership did go down a little bit, but it could also be a testament to we're reaching the despair era era of cryptocurrency right now and in that long-term sort of chart that we sometimes look at uh like the cycles and the phases of crypto um when we look at stuff like that then we start to get an idea that maybe just maybe um that, that maybe just maybe um you know we're, we're getting at the real end of it right now and that might be really what's happening right now. We have a little bit of um, uh, we have a little bit more of that downward sort of spiral, I think, uh, to go. Uh, we have a little bit more pain that we're going to experience. I don't know how bad it's going to get. I want to say twenty one seven, maybe twenty thousand. But then after that, then I think we're you know, uh, I, th I think it's going to be generally in an upward fashion. And I don't know when that move is going to happen. Uh, we can look at charts all day long. And come up with different areas and different values and different possibilities uh, for when these things are going to happen. But if you're looking at it right now and you're taking a snapshot of the one hour moving up uh, right now, you've got um, you've got this wick up here at the top. You're at the point of control, which means that you're going to have to break one way or another. Uh, you're overbought right now. So it looks like that that's going to come down, which means that you're going to come down. So everything looks right now to be bearish when you move up to a four hour and you're seeing the same big wick up here. And you're seeing that you're you just entered over bought, but you got a green buy signal. That green buy signal minted over here. So this is probably a move that's played out. You might get a little bit more upside off of it, uh, or it could crash back down immediately. So uh, this one's kind of in the middle and indecisive. So if we go to two hour, uh, then we look at the two hour. The two hour looks like it's already getting well overbought and probably due for a move to the downside. We look at the daily chart. Uh, we got a green buy signal that just minted uh, today on uh, this because it was moving up. I don't know if that'll maintain. The day before we had a red sell signal, so uh, it could be that we're you know not exactly 
uh, ready uh, yet uh, today. Uh, we, we're still overbought. Uh, the money flow starting to come down in, in the red. So uh, it, it looks to me like a little bit bearish on the weekly, certainly looking bullish, but that overbought uh, is not very deep. So anything that we do wouldn't sustain, but for a few weeks, it looks like, or uh, at a guess would be. But we are in this little range right here. And if you come over here, this is a pocket where there should be a lot of quick movement. So expect to see some quick movements in and out of this pocket uh, down to these ranges here, which brings us to 26,000. So we could be looking at a move down to 26,000 coming very, very, very quickly. Um, it, it really just looks like we're kind of bullish divergence on the 30 minute. You can see that playing out right there. A big bullish divergence playing out right there. So that should be an indicator of some more significant downside. Uh, lower time frames, 15 minute. You got a uh, you got a blood diamond just printed, uh, which would indicate a lot more downside to come. Again, speculative at best, but uh, looks like the market is ready for a correction to the downside, and we're starting to see a little bit of sell off. And I can't believe that this goddamn thing does this every single time. Let's get over here um, onto well, some Dgen plays. We're gonna skip a lot of this other stuff. Uh, we got Pepe running a little bit today. We've got Wagme Games kind of having a little correction. Uh, 100X doing a little corrective move. Uh, nothing really out there going crazy. Musk. Uh, guys, I want to tell you what happened with Musk today uh, because this dude is an asshole. So I went to uh, – somebody asked me about trending on Dex Tools, and they told me they'd do it for 300 bucks. Uh, I said, okay, you know what? I will send you 300 bucks. It's worth taking a shot, right? So I send the guy 300 bucks, and he's like, bro, uh, it's not enough. I need 100 more to buy a few more bots in order to get you trending. And I said, okay, um, I'm not going to do that because you said 300 and then i realized this is crypto if i don't just lean into this this guy's this little fucking asshole is gonna you know he's gonna mess this up somehow so uh, i gave him another hundred dollars the moment i gave him another hundred dollars he said all right fam i got you on my son's life and then two minutes later my phone rings and it's this guy going hello i'm going to you from the nether blah, blah 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 and then he's like uh i need 50 more dollars to make this happen or i can't get you trending and i'm like what so then so then even though I know better, I'm already into it for 400 bucks. I'm like, you know what? 50 more dollars. I'm going to take a shot on it. <laughs> I sent him $50 and I shit you not. Two minutes later, he calls and says 50 more. And at that point, I reported him. I blocked him. I took a screenshot of everything. Uh, by the way, if you want to know who this piece of shit is, uh, let's uh, see if I can pull that up. Oh, no, he... Uh, uh, He deleted his account. Never mind. Um, I got the phone number, though. I'm going to post it all over so that you people can see it. And then, uh, actually, I shared it with somebody, and they were like, oh, my God, I know this person by the phone number. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna have fun with that over the next day or so. Um, it, 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 basically, that's what it was. Blah, blah, world says, uh, LOL, 30, 100, 50, 25, 10 bucks. And, and look, <laughs> my phone rings off the hook all day. Uh, I, I keep my phone on do not disturb because my phone is always ringing off the hook. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many people are calling me on Telegram like, bro, bro, I could make a deal for you today. And they they all have the bro uh, deals. All right, let me find it. God damn it. Let me uh, hold on. It's. It is it's gonna be easy for me to show you the picture too, by the way. So uh -uh. There we go. all right, so I feel like I should call this guy like Large Marge. I feel like it's, I feel like this is like a, um, like a truck driving female. You know what I mean? All right. So here we go. All right. So you can see here it is right here. Um, country code 31. That's the Netherlands. Uh, 620, 65, 13, 89. 
If anybody is in the Netherlands, by the way, and you want to call them, say, Bleeves wants his $450 back, you piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like, just call the guy up and, and start railing on him. And uh, But anyway, so here it is. He says, uh, uh, what are you saying? Uh, 400, sorry, bro, please only send, send only 50. I'll get you up. Uh, and I said, send my 400 back. I don't want your help. You're constantly asking for more. It's a promise from me, just $50 more on my bot to get you up and coming. Uh, you see the impact shortly. I've been trying hard to see you trend. Uh, if I do not get it returned, I'm reporting you. And I said, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and he said, $50, I'll do it. I swore, bro. Uh, and, and he kept going and kept going and kept going and like called me. I, I want to say 10 times, just called me 10 times over this anyway. So that's what that guy did. So, um, but here we are. Uh, this is Musk. Uh, if you look at this right here, then you are looking at a, a pendant type breakout getting ready to happen. Like that's what it would look like here. And if I take, and I've used this right here, but if I move this up here and I move this down here, you can see like it really kind of lines up for a potential breakout. So uh, I do feel like we're about to have a move. I do think the community uh, is pretty into it. Uh, and I, I think it's just a matter of time right now uh, before some people come in. We do have all of our socials updated, uh, which was a big deal, by the way. Uh, and it cost a half ETH to do, which is annoys the shit out of me. Uh, but those are all done. So, you know, and, and look, I don't know. Um, um, Mike Graham says, please, my man, um, this is crypto. How could you fall for the bot scam? Well, you know what? The, the the reason that I did that is because after I asked him and after we did it, uh, I watched him trend me on whatchamacallit. And you know what? It was only at this point, it was a $300 thing, Mike. And it seemed like at 300 bucks, it was going to be worth it. And then once it was $300 and once he said, oh, I need more, I was like, you know what? I'll try it. Um just to see what happens. And then I figured I was already into it. So I gave him another $50. I consider that a gratuity. So dude got a tip for scamming me. So uh, it, it was just kind of crazy. Now uh, let's get into, if you guys want to check it out and see just for a second here, uh, Blair, this is the hangout. This is the muskrat um, area. We're going to have to cut. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, ba, bam, ba, bam, 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 bam. I want to be sedated. All right, so here we go. And up here, we have got the, right there, muskrats. And you can pop in here. All right, so here's the game. What I recommend is, uh, before you do it, if you load into spatial for muskrats, hit the G button, and then go to pointer lock and click pointer lock. And then when you run through, you hold the shift button down. And scooping up as many of these as you can. And very easy to do, by the way. Uh, it takes a little getting used to uh, from a like a pattern recognition thing, because that's really what it is, is you're just kind of identifying a pattern here and you're trying to follow uh, that pattern. So, um, but uh, again, not a lot to it. Just making sure that you're always getting something for your time over here. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Here we go. And um, ah, all right, so time's up, and my score, 289. So I end up getting a 289 score. So, and generally speaking, I'm getting about 300, something like that. So um, if you guys want to check that out, I mean, you can come in and you can trust, you can uh, you can certainly check it out for the day. Uh, very fun. It's uh, Chris over here says, hey, believes I posted a 400 plus video run in Telegram. Somebody banned Chris from Telegram. For that bullshit like nobody beats the believer uh nobody nobody does that shit and you, and you certainly don't beat it you certainly don't post a video of it what kind of horse shit is that by the way look at this habibi come to uh habibi come to muskrat oh god damn i gotta send this to wolfie habibi come to muskrat up oh, here we go all right so uh by the way if you want to take a screenshot of your character 
uh, you can hit H and that will get rid of all the stuff. And then let's zoom in here and let's get a picture here for, um, we want it to be Elon Muskrat. There we go. All right, now we're gonna take a screenshot and we're gonna we're gonna uh, post this on Twitter. By the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, it's at Believes Crypto. You can follow me over there. Uh, we did that, so we take a picture and then we hit this and then we hit this and then uh, let's pop this out just a little bit and uh, we want to do this one and all right. Now uh, we want to pop this out and we want to go over here and we want uh, BB come to Elon Metaverse. Here we go. Habibi, come to Musk Metaverse. At I am Crypto Wolfie. There we go. And at Dub X. Let's show Aldo. And then uh, let's do a quick link over here. There we go. All right. Now we got uh, now we got um, Dubai X token. Maybe checking it out. So uh, and first of all, Chris, fuck your four thirty nine. Don't be po posting stuff like that. Polly got four hundred and thirty. You know what? You guys are cheating. Jesus Christ. So there's got to be a cheat bot or something like that because nobody beats believes at his own game. You know what I mean? Like that's just that's just that's not gonna happen. Uh, anyway, whoever has the highest score in the next 48 hours is going to win $100 in Musk tokens. And if we get on just a little bit of a run, that becomes $1,000, $10,000. It becomes a quite a bit uh, if you are interested. So if you're not, then eh, shame on you. But if you are, make sure you get in there and start to play. And here's the thing. Uh, the game in itself, uh, despite being a simple game uh, to play, is fun. It, it's actually very fun to play. Uh, and it doesn't last for a very long time. That's the cool part about it is you only go in there for 60 seconds. You got 60 seconds to collect as much as you can. Uh, if you uh, uh, if you collect uh, enough, then you could possibly win. There we go. Uh, and Chris says, if I win, I'm going to send it to the burn wallet. So there you go, guys. Um, the challenge has been issued. So um, without further ado, remember, guys, uh, it would help me out tremendously if you guys uh, gave me some support through MEXE, -E, ME, uh, Gate.io, uh, RubyDex, NordVPN, or if you signed up uh, and became a member of the channel, that certainly helps me out. $4.99 a month for memberships. Um, $99.99 a month to become what is called a cult of believes or something like that. Uh, I was, I was first of all, let me just admit, I was not high when I did that. I actually do this while sober. So yeah, there's that. Uh, and also, uh, I do have a new studio, so um, uh, I'm going to be standing up pretty soon. I'm going to be doing that uh, uh, Rodney thing. I'll be doing that BitBoy thing. I'll be standing up uh, when I stream pretty soon. We're going to be doing some changes, uh, upgrading the entire setup here. So uh, things are about to change uh, in a big way uh, at Believe Most Believable Studios. That's what we're going to call it, at Most Believable Studios. So until the morning. This is not financial advice. My name is Believes. I'm always ready. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, remember, uh, if you haven't already, uh, but please go to Twitter. Follow me at, at Believes Crypto. Uh, and uh, if you do that, then uh, you don't get anything. And I probably won't be posting for about a week or so because I am going dead silent for a week on Twitter to try to get rid of a search ban. So you won't be seeing any updates from me. But you will on Friday as my final act of kindness I'll be on the DubX podcast with Ben Armstrong, and we will be talking about Bencoin. We will be talking about Dubai X. We will be talking about uh, 
the Ben Armstrong Crypto Show, Bax, I guess we're going to call it. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, Ben, AJ, and Jay Change, or as I like to call them, the true believers. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, we'll see you guys very soon. I'm about to scare you with the outro. Uh, don't be afraid. Hold on tight. And then if you would, leave a comment after it ends. Just hit the refresh button on YouTube and post that you like the content, that you hate the content. Um, and and if, you, if you got something that you like to say about TJ, you can say that too. We'll talk to you again soon. It's been a long day. I mean a long week. Maybe a long year. So let's get something clear. We're going to stock up all some party favors later on. Tell everybody they're invited. You should come along. Let's bring your good. Ladies, don't be there tonight.